Good morning, and welcome to Cottonwood Baptist Church on this Sunday, a day that the Lord has made. We thank each and every member and each and every person who may not be a member for joining us this morning. We come to celebrate and worship our God, and we hope that you have too. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Amen, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, we uh, Giving all praises to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, it is indeed an honor to be here one more time uh, to the Cottonwood Church, to all of you that are watching. We thank God for you. Uh, to Sister uh, Jamie, we thank God for her as we continue to keep her and her family lifted in prayer. And Deacon Mac, we thank God for you also. Uh, to my pastor, Pastor Cornelius Bass uh, from the Pleasant Valley uh, 
Baptist Church, I give God honor and glory for him. I'm not going to be before you long, but there is a song in my spirit. When the storm of life will rage and stand by me. Tried to get me 
to bow down to some stuff. Mm -hmm. He tried to get you to bow down to some stuff. Maybe, maybe it was worry. Uh, maybe it was stress. Maybe it was depression. But you told yourself, yay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I wish I had somebody this morning that was honest enough to say that the devil almost had me. But you told yourself that by his stripes, I'm healed. And no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm, I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this. Uh, here it is uh -huh, in the Bible. Uh, the king says he's having a conversation with the Hebrew boys in verse 14 and 15. He's, he's asking them. He says, now I heard uh, that you're not bowing down to my gods. I heard uh, that you're not bowing down to my golden image. Uh, and I, I warned y'all, if you don't bow down, I'm going to throw you into this furnace. And then it says here in the text, in verse 16 and 17, they were quick to answer. And how many of you understand that when you're in some real trouble, you gotta, you got to be quick to fall down on your knees. You, you got to be quick to say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. You got to be quick to respond when you get into some trouble. Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, here it is. Here it is. He says, if you're not going to bow down, listen, he says, we got, I got to throw you into this furnace. Uh, and then the Hebrew boys was found and they said, the God we serve, oh, have mercy, will surely deliver us. Will surely deliver us. Have you ever been through a situation where you weren't sure, but you just had no other choice but to trust, lean, and depend on God? You didn't know how the money was going to come. You didn't know how it was going to work out, how it was going to play out, but you had no other choice but to lean and depend on Jesus. I'm talking about knowing that God will make a way out of no way. Hallelujah this morning. Uh, but they said, the God we serve will surely deliver us. That's a word, uh, beloved, that's a word concerning faith. Uh, and I want to tell somebody that no matter what you're faced with in life, you have to have faith. You, you, you must speak with faith. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, now faith is a substance of things so far and the evidence of things not seen. Uh, the Hebrew boys in verse 17 they spoke through, they spoke life through faith. And I want to encourage somebody this morning to speak life. And at the moment you realize what you're carrying on the inside of you is the moment you'll come out of whatever you're going through. I, I'll repeat that again. The moment you realize that what you're carrying on the inside of you, because the Bible says that the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives on the inside of you. When you realize that, you'll come out. You'll come out. You'll start speaking into your situation. Devil, you can't, you can't have me like this. Devil, you can't have my mind. My, my mind belongs to God. You'll start speaking life unto your situation. Uh, yeah, the favor of God. I want to tell you this morning, the favor of God is on your life. Yes, sir. Uh, and, and with that being said, there's nothing in life that can extinguish the favor of God on your life. Uh, yeah, many of you, many of somebody ought to be able to testify uh, and understand that when the enemy has you all tied up, when he has you all tied up, it looks like you'll never get out of that thing. Uh, but how many of you know this morning that God will come through and cut the ropes of that thing and bring you out of all your troubles? Yes, uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's in the fire. It's when you go through trials. It's when you go through tribulations. It's when you go through tests. It's when you go through trials. It's in the fire. Uh, when you're tested and, and, you, and you begin to praise, have you ever just been uh, begin to ride down the street and tears begin to roll down your face just thinking about the goodness of Jesus and, and you begin to open up your mouth and say, thank you Jesus for my trial. It's in, the, it's in the fire. It's in the fire when your praise it tells God that you're ready to come out. I want to tell somebody, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers them out of them all. Understand, understand, beloved, you can't, you can't, you can't embrace what God has for you 
until you accept what God has done for you. Oh, I repeat that again. You can't embrace what God has for you until you accept what God has done for you. Has God been good to anybody oh, this morning? Has he brought you through seen and unseen dangers? I understand, I understand where you are right now. You're telling yourself, uh, I never, I never it, uh, imagined it to be like this. This is, this is not how I pictured uh, 2021 to be. This is not how I pictured it. You, uh, you never in a million years would have imagined that it cost so much just to survive. You never in a million years would have thought it cost so much just to make it. The things you have to give up. Uh, yes, the things you have to let go of. The things uh, you have to get rid of. The price you have to pay. And the things you have to endure. You never would have thought it come so much, but I want to tell you this morning that you're coming out. You're coming out. You're coming out. And I was told like this one, you've been tried in the fire. You'll come out as pure gold. How many of you, how many of you can be real to the fact uh, that there are some things that I, I'm going through uh, there are some things that I've been through uh, that I know that it ain't nobody else but Jesus that keeps on keeping me through it all. How many of you can say that it was in your struggle uh, that God allowed you to stumble upon your strength? Uh, oh, hallelujah, somebody. Uh, the Bible says, the Bible says here, as a result of the Hebrew boys not bound down, uh, they get thrown into the furnace. Yeah, yeah. And if you look at the text, it says uh, when they get thrown, you can put me in E-flat just in case some trouble start. Right. When they get thrown into the furnace, the Bible says the king tells the men to turn up the flame. Mm -hmm. He tells the men to turn up the flame. And how many of you know uh, that when life gets turned up, right. uh, he says he looks down off in there and he sees a fourth person. He said, now I know I threw three people in there, but I see one more person. When life gets hard, I want to tell you today that God is right there in the midst of the fire, in the midst of the furnace right with you. Uh -huh. He said, I only threw three people in there, but I see a fourth person. Yes, yes, yes. And I believe uh -huh, that the Hebrew boys didn't bow down because they understood that one day at the name of Jesus, yeah, yeah. every knee must bow. Mm -hmm. They understood that one day at the name of Jesus, uh -huh, every tongue must confess. Mm -hmm. Have I got a witness in here? Uh -huh. They understood that sickness one day will have to bow. Uh -huh. They understood uh -huh, that doubt one day would have to bow. Uh -huh. They understood that fear one day would have to bow. Uh -huh. They understood that all of your problems one day would have to bow. Have I got a witness because uh, have the name Out there that can say, I don't look like yeah. 
true and living king. Yeah, I'm so glad that trouble don't last always. Yes, Jesus will turn all of your midnights into day. I'm going to come to a close. A mumbly word. Yeah, they crucified him and he died. And I'm writing uh, uh, until rigor mortis begin to set in. And when rigor mortis sets in, your nails begin to leave your body. He died, yes, he died. Uh -huh. But I got the news for you this morning uh, uh, That when life hit his body uh, His nails begin to grow back on his hand Breath begin to come back in his body And he rose early Sunday morning With all
to get to verse 24 and 25, where it says, Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, and rose up in haste and spake, and said unto his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, yes, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Amen, amen. I'm coming out. Three went in, but there were four that were in the fire, and the only way the three came out was by the power of the four. Amen. We hope you have been blessed with this word. We hope that you are able to go through the rest of this day and the rest of your days on this earth knowing that God is your Savior. God is, is who we need to keep our attention focused on because he is the only way we're going to come out of whatever troubles, whatever situations we may find ourselves in. God bless you and, and have a, uh, a blessed day. Amen. Amen. Uh, 